Time now for the world famous and critically renowned oh. OTR pop. I always forget that this is part of it when I say yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget. <laughs> you are a proud BPS mom. Boston Latin is the nation's first public school established in 1635. In 1639, the first elementary school was opened in Boston. And what school was that? There are options on the screen. The Mather School. You oh win. You win. <laughs> and she didn't even see the options. I know this one well. <laughs> Name for Richard Mather. Absolutely. Okay. Question two. Tom Menino. Served the most years as Boston mayor, 20 years, six months. Second place is actually a tie between Kevin White and James Michael Curley, okay. 16 years. Your question is, who's third on the list? And we have names for you. Is it Hines, is it Walsh, is it Flynn? Hines, Walsh, or Flynn? In th um, 16 years. Okay. Hines, Walsh, or Flynn? Flynn. It was Hines. He served 10 years from 1950 years. to 1960, but just by a few months, by the way, over Flynn. So oh, interesting. You well, were in the right ballpark. Mayor Flynn has had a huge impact <laughs> on <right>. our city. <laughs> uh, at one time, to help support your family, you started a tea house business in Chicago. So we have a Boston Tea Party question for you. <laughs> okay. And this is a true or false question. Actual tea leaves from the cargo thrown into the harbor back in wow. 1773 survive to this day? That's a yes or a no question. It doesn't seem like that's possible, but I feel like this question is because it's A, true. You, you analyzed it correctly. As our dear friend, the, the, the dearly departed Dick Albert would say, it is true. In fact, we have Ugh. proof of it. That, that, that is a vial of leaves collected at Dorchester Neck as part of the collection Ugly. of the American Antiquarian Quite Society in Worcester. Right now. That's it right there. I don't know if you want to drink the tea, but there it is right there. I would All right, say no. so let's wrap up with public transportation. You've advocated for a fare free public transportation in Boston, and right now that is the case on some MBTA bus routes. So here's your question In 2020, what country became the first to offer free public transportation? Australia, Luxembourg, or Finland? Luxembourg. Yeah, that's right. Ding, 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 ding. Three I know my fair free transit. <laughs> you nailed it. Perfect. Well, speaking of transit, <laughs> federal transit officials, as you know, are coming to Boston to inspect the T system for safety problems. Um, they've only done this once before since 2015 with the DC system. You take the T often. Is the system, do you feel, is safe today? I ride the T regularly. I was just on yesterday and, and have my regular commute. There are certainly a lot of things that we need to improve and invest in, and the T has been working hard to be proactive about those. <coughs> it, is, it is a welcome investigation to ensure that the instances, whether on the actual vehicles, the buses and the trains, or escalators, or stairways, there should be no question about safety on such a fundamental piece of infrastructure. But it must worry you that uh, they are coming here to inspect the system when they don't do that very often. In fact, it's only the second time they've ever done it. Does it worry you when you heard that? For riders, the more eyes, the better. The more that we can proactively head off situations and figure out what might not be working, great for, for all of us. Um, I know that we carry our most precious cargo on the T, our, our kids in strollers, our seniors, our residents and commuters. So look forward to making I, sure I, that I, that. I do have to ask you yeah. though, you've been talking a lot about how you want to do, make the entire system free, but the system is sort of headed for a pandemic, uh, you know, free for all um, as soon as the COVID money is runs out. So are you in light of all the safety problems that alleged safety problems and with everything else that's going on, are you still pushing and how aggressively for free fares by the end of this first term? In fact, the, the fact that we are where we are with system-wide questions about safety is directly connected to how we finance that system. It has not been working for a long, long time to put that cost on the backs of riders. We don't generate enough funds doing so, and especially during the pandemic as ridership has gone down, systems across the country have been struggling to figure out how do we pay for basic service when we can't get it all from riders. That has resulted in, in Boston in deferred maintenance for decades. Frankly, many of these safety issues could have been avoided if we had been maintaining our trains and cars and tracks much earlier on. And so we need to rethink how we truly fund and hold up this system and, and fund it like the public good that it is. Well, let, let's talk about Mass and Cass. You, you cleared out the area at one point, but the homeless population is returning. Your, your engagement center is struggling. So what is the next step? I know you're not going to abandon it. What is the next That's step? Right. It is a different set of issues and a different dynamic at Mass and Cass and that epicenter of the city in winter compared to spring and summer. And so our targeted actions this past winter, I truly believe saved many lives in, in those moments of blizzards and mm -hmm. cold. Um, if folks had 
only had the option of living in tents on the street, we would be in a very different place right now. Now, as the weather gets warmer, we are finding that large crowds bring other challenges, and we are looking to make sure that the enforcement is there for any illegal activity that might be happening, and most of all, that we're working with our regional partners to get the bigger picture plans going. We need to decentralize services. We've started running a shuttle system to connect anyone uh, at Mass and Cass to other services during the day, whether providers like at St. Francis House or Rosie's Place, but we need an even wider net of accessibility for where services, treatment, and housing can come from. Mayor Wu, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having Mayor me. Mayor Michelle Wu has been on the record this morning.